Okay, so today we are going through question 51 from exercise 29A in this textbook. Now, question 51 says, prove that um, this identity, now if this is the expression for P of R, find the value of P1 plus P2 plus P3 all the way up to Pn, also show this relationship so we have p1 plus p um 2p2 plus 3p3 all the way up to npn equals to um, n times x okay let's prove this identity so the left hand side we have r times n choose r and we can expand this which gives us r times n factorial r factorial n minus r all factorial so r and r factorials they cancel out leaving you with r minus one factorial on the denominator and let's look at our right hand side we have n choose n minus one r minus one so let's let's expand this we have n times n minus one factorial r minus one factorial n minus one minus r plus 1. So the minus 1 and plus 1, they cancel out, leaving you with n minus r factorial. And n times n minus 1 factorial is equivalent to n factorial. And you have divided by r minus 1 factorial, n minus r factorial. As you can see, our left hand side equals to our right hand side. So this identity is true. Okay, let's look at the second part of the question. We are given that P of R equals to this expression. We need to show that P1 plus P2 all the way up to Pn equals to a value. So I think the easier way to approach this question is to actually X, write out what P1, P2 and Pn equals to. So we have P1, put 1 in replace of R. We have N choose 1, X, 1 minus X to the power of n minus 1, p2, n choose 2, x squared, 1 minus x, to the power of n minus 2, all the way up to pn equals to n choose n, x to the power of, of n. And then this, you have n minus n, which you get 0, so 1 minus x to the power of 0 equals to 1. Now, if you observe this, this is actually equivalent to the binomial expansion of this. So if you expand this, you actually get the terms actually becomes P1, P2, and Pn. So let's actually try expanding this. So we should get P0 times 1 minus x to the power of n plus n choose 1, 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1, x plus n choose 2, 1 minus x to the power of n minus 2 x squared all the way up to n choose n x to the power of n. Now as you can see here, this is equivalent to p1 plus this is p2 plus this is pn. So, and the question wants us to find the value of p1 plus p2 plus all the way up to pn so which means we need to make this part the subject and in order to make this the subject we need to move everything else that is irrelevant to the left hand side of the equation now let's simplify this 1 minus x plus x is equivalent to 1 because the minus x and x they cancel out and 1 to the power of n is also equal to 1 so you have 1 on the left hand side and we need to move this term to the left hand side as well so n choose 0 is equivalent to 1 anything choose 0 is 1 so which means what is left is 1 minus x to the power of n let's move it to the left hand side Okay, so therefore, P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus all the way up to Pn is e equals to 1 minus 1 minus x to the power of n. Okay, so that's part 1 done. So which means P1 plus P2 plus all the way up to Pn equals to this expression. So that's the value. Okay, now let's look at 
part two, or this is actually the third part of the question, which is the hardest part. So we need to prove that P1 plus 2P2 plus 3P3 all the way up to Npn equals to N of x. Um, now what we should do is I'm going to introduce sigma notation um, to solve this problem because it's actually a more elegant way of writing out our solution. Now P1 plus P2 plus P3 from here is equivalent to Okay, so this is equivalent to this sigma expression. Okay, now we need to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So on the left hand side, when we differentiate this with respect to x, we need to apply the product rule just for this part. Okay, so applying the product rule, we need to differentiate the first function. So r down the front, we have x to the power of r minus 1 times the second function plus differentiate the second function we get n minus r and then times 1 minus x to the power of n minus r minus 1 and then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside which we get minus 1 and I'm going to put this um, at the front here so changing the positive sign into a negative. Differentiating this we need to bring the n down so we get minus n 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1 and then multiply by the derivative of the inside which we get minus 1. So this becomes a positive at the front. Okay, the next step is to actually simplify this expression. You can see that there's a common factor of x to the power of r minus 1 and 1 minus x to the power of n minus r minus 1. That's a common factor. So let's take it out and simplify this. Okay, taking, the <coughs> taking this out in the first bracket, we're left with r times 1 minus r, 1 minus x. And in our second bracket, taking um, x to the power of r minus 1 out, we're left with um, m minus r times x, and this is already taken outside the bracket. Okay, now let's simplify this bracket. Now this part you can see that this they cancel out, leaving you with r minus n times x. Okay, now what we need to do is we actually need to um, expand this out again. So let's get rid of this bracket. Okay, we need to expand this out which means we need to have this part multiplied by r and the same part multiplied by um, n times x. Um, we actually need to compare it back to the question. Um, now, having a look at this part, this part here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, write this in sigma notation as well so that I can do a comparison. So let's do this on the side. So we have P1 plus 2P2 plus 3P3 all the way up to NPN. Let's put this in sigma notations. So we have sigma N to the, um, from R equals to 1 all the way up to N. N choose R, R, X to the power of R, 1 minus X to the power of n minus r. Now how do I know this is the sigma expression? You can see that compared to here, the sigma expression of p1 plus p2 plus p3 all the way up to pn equals to this. And this, what we have on the board here, is just with an extra r at the front. So it's exactly equal to this with r at the front. Okay, so there's your extra r. Now let's make a comparison in the first bit here. We can see that this is very similar to 
um, that sigma ex expression. So we, we've got the entries R there, we've got the R there, and we've got the X and we've got the 1 minus X. The only difference between them is the power of X and the power of 1 minus X. So we need to put this into that form. Now in order to do that, let's see what we need to modify to put into that form. So I need to write it in terms of that. Okay, so what do I need to put out the front here so that I did not, so to balance this out. So in order to have x to the power of r, I need to divide that by x so that when I divide x to the power of r by x, I get x to the power of r minus 1. And from here, I need to also divide it by 1 minus x. So this, I will get x. Um, n, uh, 1 minus x to the power of n minus r minus 1. Okay, now what about this bit here? Now this bit, you can see that it's very similar to p1 plus p2 plus p3 all the way up to pn. Okay, let's write this out in sigma notation from earlier. Okay, again, this is very similar to this. Okay, apart from there's an extra n here, and the power of x and the power of 1 minus x are different. So, let's put it into that form. So we have, actually the power of x is the same, so the only difference is the power of 1 minus x. Now n, we can actually take it outside the sigma sign because the only thing that changes here is the value of r. And n is a constant, so we can take it outside. Now, in order to change this into 1 minus x to the power of n minus r, again, we need to divide the, the front by 1 minus x. So, to balance out the equation. Okay, so this part here, as we worked out earlier, is equal, um, equals to p of 1 plus 2p of 2 plus 3p of 3 all the way up to np of n. And this part equals to p of 1 plus p of 2 all the way up to p of n. And the value of this, we've actually done it in the second part, which equals to this. So we can make that substitution here. Okay, since we need to make this part the subject, let's firstly move this chunk to the right-hand side. Okay, as you can see, this is what we've got. Now, to make this the subject, the next step is to multiply both sides by x times 1 minus x. So we get p of 1 plus 2p of 2 plus 3p of 3. Okay, multiply this by x times 1 minus x, we get nx. And then when you have 1 minus x times this, we get 1 minus x to the power of n. Plus, now when you have this multiplied by this, you can see that 1 minus x um, cancels out with over, with n over 1 minus x. So the 1 minus x, they cancel out, and we just have n times x. Okay, now the next step is to expand this bracket. Okay, now as you can see, this, they cancel out, leaving you with NX. So that's the end of the proof.